Welcome to the Web of Trust. And you know what? Since we're talking about trust, I've never trusted lizards right from the get go. You've already seen the chain of trust. You're using it currently right now to watch this video. And one trust isn't necessarily better than the other, it's just they have particular use cases. And the benefit to the, the chain of trust in a web model, uh, such as using your browser, and that is you don't have to rate the degree of trust. The trust is explicit because you have these intermediary and root certificates installed in your computer, sometimes directly into the browser. And through that trust, since we've already vetted these root CAs, that because we trust that the root CA did their job, they validated that, uh, say the bank is who they say they are, that you know, if we see the lock, you know, we feel relatively assured if you're going to provide some credit card information, you're then going to want to find out, well, what kind of certificate was uh, given by checking out uh, what intermediary CA did it. Something like Let's Encrypt, anybody could get it. But uh, if you've got, say, something like, like Thaw or Global Sign, and they have like an extended validation, and it's from a bank, it probably feel really good. If you see Let's Encrypt and it's a bank, don't log in. Uh, and then you have some of the, the self signs. They provide the, the encryption, but no trust. And we'll see that in just a moment. For here, if we were to say, talk to Axel here, and you know, we didn't have any kind of mutual trust or indirect trust at all and we were just given this key uh, from them then you know we really don't know whether we if that person is who they say they are a anybody can make a key pair and share it because of that there's lots of forgeries out there uh, and the web of trust really is, well, who has signed your key and has vouched that you are who you say you are? There are some steps like, well, you can know them personally. You could check their government issued ID and meet them in person. Maybe you called them on the phone, had a, had a Zoom call, but multiple people can sign your key. And if you have their key, keys installed, then now you have some indirect trust. Uh, so if we just take a look at an axle here, well, first the thing we want to figure out is who are some of the direct trusts that uh, that axle has. And currently it looks like it's just Ingo and that's the only one. So Ingo and Axel you know, they, they know each other. But, you know, say we wanted to talk to someone else. So then it would have to f figure out, well, what other indirect, or what other trusts that could they potentially have if uh, Su Susie, C-U-S-I, wanted to contact uh, Axel? Well, then Axel, or Susie then, is going to have to try and find someone that they indirectly trust from from Axel, so uh, really uh, going to have to, to trust someone close to them. Uh, so Manual has some indirect trust from Axel. Uh, Eva does, and they only have those because they all trust Ingo. So I mean, if you're Susie, I probably wouldn't really trust Axel, uh, but uh, Eva could trust Ingo, but Manuel and Susie, uh, Manford, I mean, there's uh, some lesser degree of, of, of trust. So I mean, say hi, 
I may not, uh, you know, wire them some, some money, but uh, based on, you know, how, how much trust you need to, to, to put in them, depending on the kind of relationship you have. Uh, Eva certainly could trust Axel a lot more than Manuel due to both of their direct trust through Ingo. Let's take a closer look at this. I'm uh, going to pull up. Uh, there is... So the first one I'm actually going to uh, take a look at here. And that is... I'm just going to talk about some forgeries here. Uh, the most common example here I, I usually give here is... I'm going to look up Elon Musk here. Pretty sure uh, he's not an IT guy. It's an engineer. It's probably none of these are him. Uh, but, you know, there's lots of keys. They're probably all forgeries. Uh, just because it says at Tesla.com, you could really put absolutely anything you wanted when you make a key. So it really boils down to, well, who has signed these keys and who trusts them? So, uh, if both have already uploaded them, if I click that, so this person, just because it says not found, doesn't mean the key's not valid, it just means they haven't uploaded it. But if you scroll through, you'll see that there are many, many keys for Elon Musk. So the example that uh, I like to give here is one of the maintainers for Mozilla. Uh, so this is uh, Gunner Wolf, and this is just a visual representation of what that trust looks like. So these these people that you see around, uh, the Rhonda, uh, Stefano, these are all people that have signed this key. They could have met him at a conference. They may have just had a Zoom call. They might have checked uh, Gunner's uh, government issued ID. Uh, but there's all kinds of ways with which they could vouch that person is who they say they are. Uh, you'll get a warning and you'll be like, your system will say, hey, are you really sure you uh, want to either sign this or trust this if all you have is just Gunner Wolf? Because, well, really, just like the Elon Musk examples, you have no idea if it's a forgery. But if you have one or more trust, uh, say you trust Rhonda and you have Rhonda's uh, key installed and now you have some direct trust. You have Rhonda's key installed and you have Gunner Wolf's. Well, now you have some assurance by at least one person. Uh, I, I like Gunnar Wolf as an example because he has a lot of people that have signed this key. And, you know, we have the, the public key, the private key, just as a reminder, you know, you keep the private key, keep that right dear to your chest, uh, don't share it. Uh, and then you've got the, the public key that uh, everybody needs if they're going to communicate uh, either privately with you or to verify that a package, like a zip file or some kind of an archive that you send to them, they want to be able to verify that that happens to be legitimate. Well, they need a public key. Uh, so. Unlike the fact that we take a a certificate and we go and install it on these all these machines, well, it's not really how it uh, works with the web of trust. You need a repository of some kind to, to place it on, uh, and then there are uh, people can also just paste their public key. They could put it uh, say in their their email signature in their their email. Or when you go to, say, some open source page, uh, they can provide their public key right on a website. But uh, there's got to be various ways of getting that public key to other people. Okay, uh, so that's just a 
brief contrasting of the, the Web of Trust, uh, where you're going to primarily see the Web of Trust is mostly in the open source community. If uh, we're going to send, say, a, an email to someone, uh, we're primarily going to use the, the, the Web of Trust if it's outside of an organization. Uh, where you could potentially use the chain of trust is in the same organization, but once you get outside of the same organization, uh, then it's going to be a bit more difficult. Uh, you could, but where it's going to be mostly common is using the web of trust. I don't see private communication usually ever happening with the chain of trust. It's usually almost always the web of trust. Uh, where you would have seen that most prevalent is something called Pretty Good Privacy, PGP. Uh, they've made a free, Im free implementation, which is the one that is in this, this lab, which is the GNU PG. So it's uh, compatible with PGP, uh, which was uh, pretty much the, the grandfather of all of this. Uh, so if you had someone with a PGP key, it should work with the GPG. But uh, we also use it uh, extensively in almost all open source installations. Uh, you, if you've used apt to install anything, you're forced to use GPG. You have a bunch of public keys installed on your system. Uh, if you've got RPMs, so you've got a Red Hat system, exact same thing. You've uh, checked every single package that, uh, that you've installed. Okay, well that's a, that's a wrap for the summary.